I mean, do you want to get into like the parachain auctions and sort of like what they are a little bit? Like, because I mean, people in the chat still don't really understand what they are. Like, like you, um, you pretty much stake your token. Like, so unlike unlike a like a usual like ICO, where where you, you let's just say you um, you pay you pay to get into a token like an ICO token, then you lose whatever you use as economic value. So let's just say I bought a thousand dollars of this token, or I, I paid one Ethereum for this token. You lose your Ethereum. With these auctions, you're just bar you're letting the the the, the teams borrow your the tokens and they're staked, and then at, at a certain point they're returned back to you, which is kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I don't actually. I think the one trade off is I don't think they're staked, so you don't collect. Uh, rewards on them as they're uh, as you bond them to <clears throat> a parachain slot, but um, you also don't risk getting zeroed out if the parachain slot ends up sucking because that's that's the whole thing. Like uh, for somebody to maintain their parachain slot, you need to constantly have like there the, you need to basically bond dot to do that. And if you're if your network sucks ass, like people are going to move on to something else. That's, that's like the whole thing is it, it allows the free market to vote on stuff that's actually useful and stuff that shit is not going to get um, bonding from an outside community. And uh, it just allows for better projects to ascend in my opinion, while right. not, while being able to, um, not be like because if, if you look at ethereum for example is like you can deploy uh you can deploy anything onto there but if you want to deploy on polka dots network you need to bond um a lot of value to do that and uh if you're if you're going so far as to do that then there's a higher probability that what's what's being worked on is actually something of quality instead of um something that because it because the whole thing is like the the token itself from the parachain slot for it to to gain value um it's got to actually be something useful so uh, it's basically a uh, a really good model for users to kind of speculate on things and then um ends up creating things that are just useful tools the market ends up using right so um be very careful what you what you end up staking your coins for. Every token is going to have a different. Um, every token is going to have a different bonding curve. Some say, um, "Hey, if you lend us your coins, you only have to stake it for a certain amount of time." Obviously, I think the minimum amount of time might be like um, about a month and a half to two months, but that could yeah. change with some of the rules and stuff. But typically, it's I, I would guess it's probably six months. For some projects, other ones are probably the, ma the maximum is two years. So it really you have to be very careful and also do the math on whether a project is worth investing into. I think Akula and Akura, or Akura, Akula, Akala, no Akala, Akala, and Akula, I hate these names. Akala and Akula, oh, whatever the fuck, Akula, <laughs> or whatever the fuck their name. You know what I'm talking about, you guys. Jesus, uh, but uh, yeah, Coin Bureau had a really good video on this actually. Karua, these are essentially like their their Ave protocols, basically. Um, you need borrowing and lending. These are great protocols. I think these are be very good, very good, and they're going to be a hub to launch more tokens on um, on these platforms. Um, then from there, you get into more speculative tokens, and this is where you can really lose your money. And I think, and I honestly think, um, I, I seriously think that um, a lot of people are going to lock away a lot of their coins. So I think holding liquid uh, dot and Kusama is really the fucking winning strategy. And then with a couple investments, if you really want the token, you can just buy it from the open market um, unless they're giving you such an unbelievable deal of like tokens for staking it, for staking your dot or your Kusama and stuff. So you have to make that position, but I would never have more than 50% of your total liquid bag staked. Because that you're just looking to just give away your entire up your your chances to actually make a lot of money and, and lock that value away in, in profits and stuff because um, we could we could go into a little bit of a let's just say um, this happens and you lock yourself for 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 two months or even three months right you still can be in the bull market so it's fine but imagine like when your coins come out like the prices are fucking it, we just took a big dip again and then you're just like shit you know. And you miss the whole big pump on on Dot or Kusama, which could, like maybe Kusama goes to eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, and then by the time you get your coins out, oh, it's like back to three hundred when I bought it. Fuck. 
and then you hope that you made enough money from the coins you just received. And what if you didn't? <laughs> what if you got fucked on? <laughs> oh my god, that would suck, bro. <laughs> So be be really be really really careful. Like me, I'm I'm not really doing any parachain auctions. Akala is maybe the only one I might do, or Moonbeam, maybe. You know, these are the only ones that I personally will do. But the rest of them, I'm not really fucking around with them. Once I get a lot more research in and I um, look into which ones I love, I like and stuff, I'll just buy it cash, mm. cash money, because people are just gonna dump them really quick and try to flip them and stuff. So there'll be an arbitrage there, and eventually the prices will go down, and then you'll be able to catch them on the low anyway. So it's like. I don't see much point in the in the ch the parachain auctions because you just get more price. I think you get a little bit more price appreciation in the main tokens themselves, and then from there be able to buy them on the low later on. But do what you guys want to do. You know, hoes want to be hoes. You know. Yeah, I guess the play on that is. Uh... The, the only um because the the tier one or what's perceived i should say what's perceived as a tier one there, there really is no tier one parachains right now it's speculation as to what's tier one and tier two uh if you can find like a good tier two one that ends up becoming a tier one that's mm -hmm. where you can get like an outsized return right <clears throat> speculating and bonding some right. of your dot or a kusama uh, but yeah, I'm kind of more on the side. I'm I'm mostly gonna just stake and hold my um, my dot, and then I'll consider uh, I'll consider it um, after I see how it goes with Kusama. Because what I want to see is how the valuations turn out for those that bonded Kusama. And um, dude, that sounds like a rug pull aggregator. <laughs> but that's because. <laughs> Dot makes the best rug pulls, I would say. In terms of uh, in terms of all these other projects, and dude, like, bro, some of these projects, man, are coming out on on Solana and Pokestarter and some of these other like like D grade, C grade, like launching pads. Man, bro, they're fucking, yeah. they're vapey, wary, bro, vapey, yeah. wary. It's just that in terms of the rug pull, the like, if the value of the token goes to shit then the communities can after the leasing period ends they can just remove their bonds and they get their right. dot back so um that's the whole point of it is it's it allows for the market to speculate and like bond value to something that they think is going to have value but um there's the option of getting that value back if it does end up being a rug so I think the game theory just kind of favors trying to build out something that's actually useful on the network because the the upside is so massive. Right. I will give anything for a hoe that gives me twelve percent APY. <laughs> well, yeah, well, actually, the APYs are going to go higher actually. So, like when when let's just say when Polkadot, because Polkadot and Kusama, you both can get like twelve. 14% APY on them, mm -hmm. staking them on Kraken or staking them themselves natively. Um, when when people do parachain auction slots, they stake them. Those coins cannot be staked in the network to be to be validators. So when you when you stake your Kusama, I expect when Kusama all the Kusama auctions, everything are set done, the APYs on Kusama and Dot are going to go up. So you're probably going to be like 16, 18%, 21% APYs. Because a lot of people, just like everything happens, right? What do people always do? They over fucking do it and they ape and go crazy into something. So you're more than likely to see too many oh, people totally over, people. over yeah, people. going like crazy, like dumbasses. And then yeah. us, us like Kusama Chadwick, you know, dons over here with all the fucking coins because we didn't, we didn't fucking stake them all. Or I mean, not stake them all. We didn't, um, you know, bond, all bond them all and stuff. We, we just... We just take their profit, and then they come out the profit. The the, the coin dumps. I'm like, man, fuck, fuck Kusama, fuck Dodd. This dude, this shit sucks. I'm out of here. And then we're like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> me, me and Wasabi are buying up all the Kusama and the Dot on the low. We're like, hey. yeah, <laughs> and triple up in our bags. Like, let's just say, yeah, you start. Let's just say it's an example, an example, right? An example. All right. Actually, here I'll pull. I'll pull something up, and I'll pull something up on these bitches. Let's let's pull something up. Let's see. 
Okay, here's trading view, right? Something that I never pull up ever because I don't like it. But for for um, but I do I really do like um, coin pairs. Actually, it's fucking awesome. So right now, Kusama is at all time highs for the Kusama to dot ratio, right? Uh, I can't hear you, Wasabi. I was gonna say it's going way higher. Oh, I know it's going way higher, bros. Like so. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. So, you guys, do you see my cursor movie? Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So basically, actually, this wick right here happened right in the middle of the last uh, crypto mindset quarter two. We were teaching people about this, which was kind of cool. So uh, while Charlie was talking in the morning, I was I was dollar costing out of my of my Kusama into Polkadot, and I actually did sell this top right here. It actually went higher. I'm surprised it's not. It went to sixteen point two. Hmm. Yeah, oh, I, like wow. I like how you're bragging about the exact. Oh, no, no, I know. I know. I'm a Chad, bro. I'm a Chad. Right at the pinnacle over here. The pinnacle, bro. The Chad, the Chad pinnacle, yeah. I sold at 16, yeah. and then when I did my order, it was at 16.2. So I just want you to know, like, like yeah. gangster. Then what I did is later on, when when it wicked down to about like 10 and a half or so, I pulled the trigger and I and I bought back all my Kusama. So effectively, I gave myself a 40 percent larger bag of Kusama. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, bite the lip. I know. I know. That was a chat. I know. That was a chat. chat. I know. I know. I'm just saying, bro. That I wear this space suit for a fucking reason. But but I'm just saying. Like, it's, so. like, it's like when you watch uh, – it's really funny. Um, if you watch uh, Alex Becker's videos, he always has to, like, point out where – uh he, he he gets to the point where he's like he's like uh, definitely embellishing how every every single move that he does is selling the top and buying the bottom. <laughs> like, what, like, literally shit. Yeah. Like, he does that every single time to the point where it's like, dude, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did I buy the Litecoin bottom? Yes. Did I buy the Bitcoin bottom? No, yes. Did I buy the... are, yeah, yeah, I get it. those those are those are gonna happen for sure. Um I'm just thinking. I'm not. I'm not. I know. I know you did that because we were talking about it when he. I think you were like on the phone when he sold your coins, yeah, or something, and then you bought back in <clears throat> at a huge discount. Yeah. But uh, that is true. It is only arrogance if you can't back it up. Right. He actually did. He did legitimately sell the top on the on the ratio. Sorry, he went zero gravity a second right there when Wasabi was giving my props right there. But Gohan, Wasabi, I like the I like so far of this conversation. You're 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 talking oh, me up. Yeah, nice right now. You can continue, bro. I love it. Keep going. All right, that's it. That's where it ends. Wait, what? <laughs> Rub <Rubbed> again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So in terms of the Kusama to dot ratio, I pretty much see like twenty to thirty, honestly, on this ratio. Yeah, I agree. Because you're having you're having a very big one time one time event where Kusama is the star of the show yeah then dot will be the star afterwards afterwards yeah. then, then only selectively will kusama be cool at certain parts right so pays for views uh maybe yeah but um yeah the the yeah. um <clears throat> yeah once uh i would say basically once the the farther Kusama gets into launching their network, the risk of not holding dot at that point starts to kind of um, go up a lot because the the speculation as far as the ratio um, once once polka dot basically launches their once they start having parachains on their network, you're probably gonna have a bleed out on the the Kusama ratio, but for now it's it's good. Um, going into like the parachain auctions, if you want to play it really safe, you can basically roll it, uh, keep you know, keep what you want long term, and then um, I would still hold definitely right. some dot later on. I'm I'm mostly just I I mostly want to go for the uh, for the dot play long term. So um, right. I'm mostly just watching uh, Kusama from like a top level to see how the network launch goes and and just see what kind of uh, speculation comes with that because then i'll have a better sense as to what will happen with polka dot later because right. it, it could be it could really be amplified like if if the launch around kusama ends up being uh really successful then there's gonna Ooh. be oh my god it'll be insane oh, with, with polka dot that's why i'm just saying yeah. like you always want to hold you always want to hold like what the what the market perceives as the number one 
And right. there's the advantage right now with Kusama because they're they're intentionally uh, bootstrapping through Kusama because it gives them time to see how stable the network is as they they um, they allow more and more parachains. So to start, they're they're not gonna allow all 100 parachains from the start. They're gonna right. slowly scale it up to make sure the network stays stable. Um, because if they run into an issue, like if the network for a good, like if if the network gets like goes down or something like that they said, they said the nicest way they they, they yeah. said they're the nicest way possible so we right. we are going to limit so we are going to limit the amount of projects that will be able to do the parachain auctions yeah and what they're so, right which which, right. which is the nice way of saying you fucking stupid fucking gorillas are going to ape in so much fucking kusama and dot into the parachain yeah. auction that no one is going to be validating the fucking blockchain so we need to limit this fucking thing yeah <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily like the problem on the the validating. The, I think the main thing is if the network just stops working because it's a the the whole code base around Dot and Kusama is uh, it's a new it's a new code base, so that comes with risk. So I think they're trying to avoid having like the network just stop because they they ran into that issue on um, Polkadot actually recently where there was a. Uh, there was like some bug with like the client they were using, but mm -hmm. it didn't really matter because it there's the old, the network right now is just processing blocks and staking rewards. So uh nobody really gives a shit. And honestly, like that's that's the other um like if you look at uh if you look at networks like Stellar, for example, their network actually went down and there was no reaction on the price whatsoever because nobody actually uses um, stellar for for actual right. utility so nobody gave a shit the price didn't react at all um if a network like ethereum went down that'd be catastrophic and i i think in the case like once you actually have these parachains plugging in if you actually have the network go down in that scenario then like the whole market's going to know about that because that is like mm -hmm. you have people actually using it at that point so um yeah uh i'm just reading the comment jimmy would you buy would you guys buy dot now um that's one that i'm not financial advice like i i'm just cost averaging my way in and that's one yeah. that i'm i'm buying like regardless of like yeah. what the price is if, it, if, if if you guys want help with the kusama to dot ratio we're going to be talking about it a lot inside the crypto mindset course so if you guys want to sign up in order to at least find out when that comes out put your email on the website and stuff and get on the waiting list. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it right now, but uh, we're going to get into crazy detail in terms of like how to actually attempt it as well, as well as like strategies on pulse mm -hmm. as well. So how to not get like rinsed <laughs> and everything and like actually make some money off of it and everything. So um, it's, it's not on sale right now. It, the waiting list is up the sale. I mean, we, it goes on sale in 10 days, June 10th. And then it, uh, it's only going to be on sale for just five days and after that, it's closed, and me and Charlie are going to be MIA for about like two weeks off of YouTube, basically. Mm -hmm. So because we're going to we're going to be pretty much, um, hmm. So we're going to be um, pretty much uh, just uh, uh, you know t uh, making sure that all the guys in the course and stuff have action plans and stuff, and then just we're going to tell them about the best moves that we see so far. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Kusama the dot. The pulse chain play and a lot of other ecosystem sort of things and where to put money at the at the current time to start making some money and of course the longer term plays you know of course but so sign up you guys right now just put in the email and then get on the waiting list yes tom bombadil oh what up tom shit i haven't seen you in a minute what's going on dude but uh, uh yeah it's it's june 18th to the it might end between the 28th to the 30th Basically, it just depends on how many uh, rest days or how many days we put in between in the course and stuff, whether we do two or three, depending on how all the guys are taking in the information.